Good morning and welcome to my world here on Michelle's Life on Repeat. Morning where I wake up with migraines and migraines try to rule the day. See, but I can't live in that state. So let's jump back to normal. So let's try this. A little more colorful, a little more real, a little more me. This is what you guys know, you know me, with color. But this morning when I woke up, it was not colorful. It was migraine, 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 and more migraine. Let's have some tea and talk about it. I'm Michelle. This is Michelle's Life on Repeat, and I deal with chronic illness, and I try to deal with it the best way I can, and then there are days when it's harder to deal with, like today. So, I'm just being real on my Chit Chat Sunday, so thanks for joining me. I wanted to welcome you if this is your first time coming here and seeing my channel. It's not always about random thoughts. It's not always about migraines or headaches or chronic illness, and it's not always about orchids. I jump around from all sorts of topics just for the fun of it and to keep my life, um, what's the word, to keep my life balanced. This morning though, when I woke up, the migraine that I was having was, um, causing all of my eye to drip. Remember I told you about that in another migraine um, clip that the, the migraine may not start with head pain, which it usually doesn't. It starts with an aura phase and the eye drips. It was bloodshot red. My head was confused. My startle reflexes woke me up from sleep with a nightmare. And I proceeded to a shower and I proceeded to chug two mugs of coffee and hope it's to shake it out of me. And still the migraine persisted. So I took my pills. I came into this room in my same party dress and I had a necklace on and I filmed. And then I went downstairs to edit and I quickly lost it all, you know, like poof, hit that button that says delete all from your phone. Yeah, that's what I did. So uh, life went on and here I am post party, post nap, no neck, ne no necklace, still in a party dress, but not feeling very partyish. <laughs> Having tea, not champagne. And some days are like that. Um, every, obviously everything that I had filmed for you, the real me telling you what I really felt about the thought of a migraine interrupting my special day for my mom. I wanted to honor my mom today with a special brunch for her birthday. And apparently all that footage is lost but in my mind, that means it wasn't meant to be. I don't, um, I think in coffee, I want to say percolate. I don't roost, percolate, over ponder, think about it too much. If it's not meant to be, it wasn't meant to be. Move forward, move on, and here we are with new footage. So I'm up filming, but I just wanted to tell you how frustrating, uh, chronic illness can be and its timing can stink. Yesterday I did have to go and do doctor's appointments and uh, a new specialist and I knew that the fluorescent lights would bother me. So I wore my hat, I wore long sleeves, I didn't wear my sunglasses because I was only in the office, filled out the form, then directly to the office, wait for the doctor for four minutes, and then he comes in and you chit chat. And wearing glasses the whole time with a first time visit with the doctor is kind of odd. So <laughs> I didn't wear sunglasses. But being under those fluorescent lights um, combined with having to go to a, 
to a grocery store supermarket afterwards and pick up a few things for today's celebration. Sitting under the fluorescent lights, waiting in the line to get to the checkout, or as you Britons say in the queue, uh, it did me in and it, it did me in and I thought I'd be okay. But by three o'clock yesterday afternoon, I was falling in bed and sleep, sound asleep until 8 p.m. Woke up with a terrible migraine, took my migraine pill, took the other pills that will help me get back to bed because I knew from 8 a.m., 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. I needed to sleep again somehow. So I did, but it progressed and lingered and woke up today still with that migraine. And for those of you who suffer migraines, you know what I'm talking about. But I get so mad that doing life outside of my house, I know will trigger migraines. And yet there, I thought I did everything I could to protect myself from it. And still it happens. It happened. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. What do you do? For those of you who have fluorescent light sensitivities, have you figured out, does it seep through your clothes? Does it uh, come in through your senses? Is it the sound coming in your ears? I thought I knew, I thought I figured it out. I, I thought a hat and the glasses and long sleeves were all that I needed. But I had a glorious yesterday. I had a fun day, date day with my husband, laughing and, and doing what we needed to do to prepare for today. But there was no mercy from the migraine. So I plugged on today and he did most of the work. I love my husband, I'm thankful for him. Mom came over, we celebrated her. My daughter and son-in-law came over and we celebrated kind of the month of September birthdays and uh, did what mom loves to do, eat dessert first with champagne, of course, and then proceeded on to the ham and the potatoes and vegetables. You have uh, a chronic illness, Maybe it isn't migraines. Maybe it is, and that's why you found my site. What do you do for celebrations? What do you do for special occasions? I have known that I can't do big gatherings anymore that are loud. I have some loud relatives, and I used to be a very loud relative myself but the fluctuations and a lot of voices and the laughter and the background noises, they will really just trigger me to high levels of migraine. So um, I don't go to a lot of things. I don't go out and do events. And that's why I say when I'm home, uh, it seems to be my safe place. That's why I say, um, I try to entertain and how is my opening go? I try to occupy my mind and my hands with distractions. And they're usually distractions within my own space, my backyard, my front yard, my house, um, my orchids, book reading, cooking, making things, talking back and forth on the internet, to real life friends that I have known and um, live far away from, but also meeting new people through YouTube and Facebook. My world has expanded. I've traveled more places on YouTube than I could ever dream, but I still am here in my home and I'm not sad about it. I love my home. I am sad that when I choose to go out to do some things, I feel like I am robbed of the experience. Can any of you relate to that? 
that you do those things and you know you need to do them, but you know you will pay for them. So I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys. What are some of the things you do in your home that helps you cope with the, the fatigue or the pain of your illness or the everydayness of your illness? I changed positions here. Let me shimmy the chair <laughs> a bit. Um, what is it that you, that you do? Uh, last winter and for the last four or five winters, I've been building history books, chronological history books of our family lineage last names. So I have a book for um, the four different last names on my mom's side, my dad's side, and I try to go up my family tree as far as I can and gather resources. and. I've done that and I've put it off almost a year now. I got to the point where I felt I knew all that I could could find out that was um, able to be verified. You know, you can only go so many generations back to verify things. And I tried to interact with cousins in the family um, trees like the ancestry and the 23 and me I was able to find some second cousins and maybe some um, cousins that were related to my mom but I interacted with interact with them through Facebook now and so we call each other cousin even though there's a generational gap between me and them excuse me my nose is itching <sighs> and um those were fun to find, to find more Westcotts, to find more Coopers, to find more of those last names that I grew up with, but didn't know aunts and uncles from. You know, your world is only so big when you're growing up, unless you come from a massively big family, and I don't. But I, I stopped, I thought, I don't have anything else to put in the books and my children weren't really interested in knowing about him. They probably will be a long time from now and I'll pass those books on to them. But now I have internet and YouTube and I think that that love of learning how to edit, how to make video clips, how to take pictures and how to how to edit and stuff. All of that has replaced the the book learning and the book uh, genealogies that I've been doing. So that's what occupies me at home. What about you? What are some of the things? Do you do some woodworking? Do you read a lot of books? I like to, to read and I love to read, but the uh, stupid migraines have robbed me of the vision that I need to read um, in the time framing that I want to read. So when I want to read in bed, by then I usually hurt and my vision is blurred because I've had to take medicines and no amount of glasses will fix that. <laughs> So I listen to a lot of books and I just started a new one and it was a joy to realize I was six chapters into it the other night and I was enjoying it and I was in another place and I had to, to pause it so I can come back in the morning and finish it because I needed sleep. This was a couple nights ago, but it's been a while since I got lost in a book like that. How about you guys? You like getting lost in a book? What kind of books do you travel away into? Fiction, nonfiction, historical, science. With my weird dreams that I already have and my weird life and the pains and the easy triggers, startle alerts, what do they call that? A, a highly sensitive brain I have with migraines. I don't watch scary I don't watch anticipatory is that the word um, drama that uh, that 
leads up to something I just that just bothers me. I can't process it. And so I watch very simple, simple things when I do watch TV, which is rare. I don't watch the news much anymore because it triggers so much um, pain, frustration, angst. It's so frustrating to see people so mean to each other that it breaks my heart. So I don't like to sit and watch it on the news, no matter what news channel you're watching. One side is bashing the other side. So it's irrelevant. It's not a matter of it being the news um, itself that is traumatic. It's not necessarily the news station. It's just all of it combined together. So I try to read um, my input of news so that there's not the emotional voice and the emotional feeling of the narrator and the visual sensual not sensual, visual sensation coming at me. I really have learned with migraines that I have to veil and protect many of my senses when I go places or when I do things or when I choose to input things uh, in, in, whether it's in a book form, a movie form, a TV form. I have to limit what will bombard my senses um, things there's a, a sweet gal i love to watch her videos she creates about lost and missing children and she tries to help bring more there's my white pack lee shining on my husband's desk and just some of the others doing their growing, doing their thing. I bless you today. I look forward to visiting with you guys in the comments down below. And I hope that you have a great day and tomorrow is even better. Thanks for joining me for this small chit chat today. I'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.